What if I told you that blood sugar spikes don't have to be part of your life anymore? That roller coaster of energy crashes and cravings and mood swings could end? Today, I am sharing something the mainstream medical system rarely discusses, the complete blueprint to eliminate blood sugar spikes for good. I'm Dr. Ergen, I'm an endocrinologist in Port St. Lucie, Florida, and operating diabetes, thyroid, and hormone center of the Treasure Coast. But first, a warning for you. What I'm about to share might contradict what you have been told by your primary care doctor, some other doctors, whatever. Some of this information challenges the conventional wisdom. And the most shocking part, the solution is not one size fits all. Blood sugar management is not just avoiding spikes or not having diabetes. It is about optimizing your entire life. The energy, the focus, the longevity, the weight management, the mood stability. It all starts with glucose control. Let's dive into the principles that will transform your relationship with food forever. There are hidden triggers beyond carbohydrates. We have all heard that carb spike blood sugar. We all know that, right? Carb spike blood sugar. But that's just the beginning of the story. The latest research from Stanford University's groundbreaking continuous glucose monitoring studies revealed something shocking. Two non-diabetic people can eat the identical meal and have completely different blood sugar responses. You will see much exaggerated differences among people with diabetes, obviously. But one participant's blood sugar barely moved after eating a banana, while another's skyrocketed. For some, oatmeal caused higher blood sugar spikes than ice cream. But why? Because four critical factors determine your personal blood sugar response. First, your microbiome composition. What is microbiome? They're in your gut. There are 100 trillion bacteria in your gut influence how we process every bite of food. Nobody thinks about that, right? A 2019 study in the Journal of Cell found that the gut bacteria can either accelerate or slow down the carbohydrate absorption. Second, the sleep quality. Just one night of poor sleep quality can reduce insulin sensitivity by 25%, equivalent to eating high sugar diet for six months. This isn't just about hours in bed, by the way. It is about your sleep cycles and the quality of sleep. Third, stress levels. Cortisol is the primary stress hormone, signals your liver to release stored glucose even when you haven't eaten anything. This phantom spike can happen during work deadlines, traffic jams, or even checking social media sometimes. And the fourth, timing. That bagel at 7 a.m. might affect you differently than the bagel at 8, 7 p.m. Your circadian rhythm influences insulin sensitivity throughout the day. But here is where it gets interesting. These factors interact differently for each person. For example, I discovered that stress spikes my blood sugar more than actual food, says Maria, who reversed her pre-diabetes in six months. For me, it was sleep. Fixing my sleep quality cut my average glucose levels by 20 points overnight, shares James, who no longer needs medication. And here's another one. I was doing everything right, but still having spikes until I addressed my gut health, Sophia says, who eliminated her afternoon energy crashes. This is why cookie cutter approaches fail. Your body is as unique as your fingerprint. But don't worry, I am going to give you a framework that works for everyone with customization points along the way. Here's a motivation matrix for you. Why knowledge is not enough. We all have some degree of knowledge, but none of us are perfect, right? Well, let's address the elephant in the room. You probably already know some things you should be doing differently. So why aren't you doing them? The answer lies in understanding the psychology of lasting change. Willpower is a limited source. Trying to force yourself to make better choices through sheer determination is like trying to hold your breath underwater. Eventually, you will come up for air. Instead, we need to work with your brain's reward system, not against it. Latest neuroscience research shows that the motivation follows a predictable pattern called the motivation triad. Number one, seek pleasure. Number two, avoid pain. Number three, conserve energy. Your brain is hardwired to follow this pattern. Fighting is futile. Secret is to align your glucose management with these natural drives. For example, instead of focusing on what you are giving up, emphasize immediate rewards. After a stable glucose meal, verbally acknowledge how good you feel. 
I have so much more energy right now. This creates a pleasure connection in your brain and you need to repeat that. Next, make the pain of poor choices. Remember, you need to avoid pain. So most people don't change because the consequences of high blood sugar seem so distant. Uh, kidney failure, I'm fine right now. Bridge this gap by checking your glucose after questionable meals. Seeing that spike creates an immediate feedback loop in your brain. Finally, reduce the energy required to make food choices. If your environment is busy, it always trumps willpower every time. If your kitchen is stocked only with a bunch of sugary foods, you want to conserve that mental energy by eliminating decisions. So just go grab whatever you have. You don't want that. Decision making is painful. But here's the crucial part most experts miss. Your motivation strategy must match your personality type. Like there are questioners out there, right? I see on the comments, I can identify these people. Oh, this is a questioner. They need to understand why behind every recommendation, which is fine. They need data, research to be convinced. And there are obligers. They need external accountability. Someone expecting them to follow through. They'll ask for a dietitian or someone to follow them. Rebels resist being told what to do, but will take action to affirm their identity and autonomy. And upholders readily meet both outer and inner expectations, but they need clear rules. Which one are you? Your answer determines your approach. Now that we understand the psychological foundation, let's get tactical with the most powerful blood sugar stabilizing strategies science has discovered so far. Now the spike stoppers we can talk about, right? And let's start with the factors that worsen blood sugar first, right? You need to know that, your triggers. Isolated carbohydrates. So carbs consumed alone hit your bloodstream like a tidal wave. The glycemic index of white bread jumps from 70 to 90 when eaten by itself. Now sleep deprivation. A 2020 study found that your nights of poor sleep reduces the insulin sensitivity by 30%, more impactful than adding 40 grams of sugar to your daily diet. Sedentary behavior after eating. Sitting after meals increases glucose spikes by up to 40% compared to some light movement. And morning cortisol. Your cortisol peaks within 30 minutes of waking. So combining this with high carb breakfast creates the perfect storm for glucose spikes. And artificial sweeteners. Contrary to popular belief, these actually worsen glucose control. A 2020 study in cell showed that they alter gut bacteria in ways that reduce glucose tolerance. And the dehydration, even mild dehydration increases blood glucose concentration and reduces insulin sensitivity. And environmental toxins that we don't pay attention to. Emerging research shows that certain chemicals like plastics, the pesticides, the household products that are from China, right, uh, can disrupt glucose metabolism. Now, for the exciting part, the factors that dramatically reduce the glucose spikes is that one thing you need to pay attention to is food sequencing. Simply changing the order in which you eat foods can reduce post-meal glucose by up to 75%. Always eat in this order. Vegetables first, protein and fat second, starches and sugars last. And you can do a vinegar preloading, right? Taking one tablespoon of vinegar, mixed in water or in your salad, before carbohydrate containing meals reduces the subsequent glucose spike by 20 to 40%. This works through acetic acid's ability to temporarily inhibit the carbohydrate digesting enzymes. Now, pre-meal exercise, just about 10 minutes of movement before eating. Even walking or body weight squats or sitting exercises can reduce your post-meal glucose spike by 30% by priming your muscles to absorb glucose. And there are specific spices like cinnamon, like berberine, fenugreek. They have been shown in multiple studies to significantly improve insulin sensitivity. Just half a teaspoon of cinnamon can reduce a meal's glycemic impact by 10 to 30%. Of course, time-restricted eating, which is intermittent fasting, which is condensing your eating window to 8 to 10 hours daily, will improve your insulin sensitivity even without changing what you eat. The latest research shows that this works partly by optimizing your circadian rhythm. An interesting one that I talked about before is the cold exposure. So brief cold exposure activates brown fat, which increases glucose clearance from the blood. 
a two minute cold shower, or if you cannot do that, the 30 seconds of face dunking in cold water before meals can reduce post meal glucose by 15%. And specific fiber types, not all fiber types are equal, like soluble gel forming fibers like psyllium husk, glucomannan, and beta glucans, they can form a physical barrier that actually slows the carbohydrate absorption. But here's the most powerful intervention of all glucose variability training. Recent research from the emerging field of metabolic flexibility suggests that deliberately cycling between periods of higher and lower carbohydrate intake, like when you're more active, you're running around, you know, you're exercising, you can have more carb, and on the days that you're not very low carb, instead of staying consistently like low carb, low carb, low carb, actually train your body to handle glucose a lot better. This is revolutionary because it means that you don't have to eliminate carbs forever. You just need to strategically time them and train your metabolism to process them efficiently. And we're not talking about bad carbs here. We're talking about healthy carbs like fruits and vegetables. Personalize your approach because you're an individual, right? Now, for the critical part that most experts miss is that your personal glucose depends on factors unique to you. Let me introduce you to three different people who all struggled with blood sugar spikes but needed completely different approaches. For example, Michael, an athletic guy, 32-year-old with a family history of diabetes. Despite being fit, his blood sugar was spiking because he likes to check his blood sugar, not that he's diabetic, and, but he discovered through testing that he has a genetic variation affecting his PPAR gamma receptor, which regulates his insulin sensitivity. His solution was not fewer carbs because he was athletic. It was just timing them differently. By consuming carbohydrates only after strength training and adding specific supplements that activated PPAR gamma, like purified omega-3 fatty acids, he normalized his response. Aisha, a 45-year-old lady, dealing with perimenopausal symptoms like a lot of women at that age and increasing glucose variability like nobody's business. And her fluctuations were causing unpredictable blood sugar responses to the same foods on different days. She was, she was about to lose it. Her solution was adapting her diet to her menstrual cycle phases. So for example, higher carb tolerance during the follicular phase, the first part, and the stricter carb limitation during the luteal phase, which is the time that she spikes. This cyclical approach reduced her average glucose by 20 points. And Robert, 58-year-old gentleman, with perfect fasting glucose, but dramatic sugar spikes after he ate. And we tested his gastrointestinal microbiome. We found dysbiosis from years of antibiotic use. And his solution focused on rebuilding his gut bacteria with specific probiotic fibers or probiotics. And within three months, his post-meal glucose spikes reduced by 67% without changing the actual foods he ate. Now, these examples highlight why generic advice fails. Your optimal approach depends on genetic variations. Over 50 genes influence glucose metabolism. Your hormonal status, especially your thyroid, cortisol, sex hormones. Microbiome composition, muscle mass and distribution. Your liver health, your sleep quality, your stress management, the environmental toxin exposure, and some medications can actually trigger blood sugar spikes. I'm gonna give you an implementation blueprint, your 30-day transformation. Now let's put everything together into a practical system that you can start today. Now week number one is gonna be establishing your baseline and identifying your personal triggers. Get a continuous glucose monitor. Even if your insurance doesn't cover it, just invest in for a couple of weeks. Test before and one to two hours after meals. Track your sleep, stress, meal timing alongside those glucose readings. Identify your top three spike-inducing foods or behaviors. In week number two, we're gonna implement the universal stabilizers. Practice food sequencing at every meal. Add vinegar before carbohydrate-containing meals. Incorporate 10 minutes of movement before or after eating. Ensure adequate hydration, minimum of two to three liters a day. And when it comes to week three, we're going to do some personal metabolic levers. Now, based on your week one data, target your biggest glucose influencers. If stress is your trigger, for example, implement specific stress reduction techniques before meals. If sleep affects you strongly, prioritize sleep hygiene above all else. If specific foods cause disproportionate spikes, 
modify or resequence them. In week four, you're going to build some metabolic flexibility. Strategically cycle between higher and lower carb days, align higher carb consumption with physical activity, practice time-restricted eating, like a 10-hour window to start, and add cold exposure training before higher carb meals. Now, the key to success is progressive implementation, not overnight change. Don't try everything at once. Start with the interventions that address your biggest triggers, then build from there. And here's a bigger picture for you. Stabilizing your blood sugar isn't just about numbers on a meter. It is about reclaiming control of your biochemistry and by extension, your life. When your glucose is stable, you experience consistent energy throughout the day improved cognitive performance, better mood, reduced inflammation, enhanced fat metabolism, improved sleep quality, and decreased cravings. And importantly, last but not least, slower aging process. This isn't just about avoiding disease. It's about optimizing your entire human experience. And the most powerful motivation comes not from fear, of what might happen if you don't change, but from experiencing how much better life feels when you do. Start with a change today. Notice how different you feel. Let that feeling, not the willpower, pull you forward. Remember, your body wants to be in balance. You are not fighting against your nature. You are removing the obstacles that prevent your body from functioning as designed. The path to stable blood sugar isn't about restriction, it's about liberation. And liberation from energy crashes, from cravings, from mood savings, the invisible biochemical forces that have been controlling you. The power to end the blood sugar spikes forever is already within you. Now you have the blueprint to activate it. And I love to hear which of these strategies you are most excited to try. Write in the comment below with your biggest takeaway and let me know your questions. And if you found this information valuable, please share it with someone who could benefit. Together, we can revolutionize how the world thinks about blood sugar management. And until next time, remember, your metabolism is adaptable, your biology is responsive, and your future is metabolically flexible. See you in the next video.